Let's try this new Dior Forever Skin Perfect 24 Hour Multi-Use Foundation Stick. I got mine in 0N, which is one of the 20 shades that they have. It is the second to lightest. It retails for $52 for 0.37 ounces. The claims are that it refines pores, hydrates skin, has a lightweight texture, and gives you all day comfort. I would definitely agree with that. It is a multi-use three-in-one stick. You can also use it as a concealer and it has a 24 hour soft matte finish. They say it has a blurring filter effect and is heat and humidity resistant. Let's get into the try-on so we can give all of those claims a good test. Let's start by priming my skin with my Tarte BB Blur. I love this. And these were the two colors I got I am gonna show you one CR, usually I am a cool, this is too dark. So I went to zero N, which actually is pretty good for me, even though the undertone is not completely correct. Zero zero N would be way too light for me, but this one I can sometimes wear neutrals. The CR, if you kind of mix them together, it sort of helps, but really it's just overall way too dark. So I think it's probably gonna have to go back. So let's go with the zero N. Okay, I'm going to start by just swiping it directly on my face. It feels so nice. It is very, very smooth. They say it glides on smooth and they're absolutely correct. I would agree with that. I'm using my Sigma F80 Kabuki brush to spread it out. I love this brush. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes if you want something that looks like a very airbrushed kind of finish. Okay, this is spreading really easily, really well. It's almost powdery whenever it kind of gets spread out. And I mean, I think the coverage is really good. It is not greasy in any way. It's got the littlest bit of shine to it, but not, not terribly. It's definitely, from what I can see, a very natural matte finish, just like they you know, advertise. Okay, so I do like this. I like this a lot. Let's see. So this is with, you know, basically gives me a good level of coverage. I'm going to tamp this in. I don't like really heavy coverage, so I'm going to make this as natural looking as possible. On the other side, I'm going to try to go for a more natural coverage in the first place. So I'm going to try, oh, I don't like this brush. This brush is too big. So I'm actually going to move to a smaller, a little bit denser brush because this one's really not picking it up. There we go, smaller, denser brush. And I'm just gonna directly put it on almost more like I would do spot concealing and use that like I would do, you know, a concealer type of foundation. I do this sometimes with my Natasha Denona concealer. If I'm not needing heavy, heavy coverage, I will just use it as my foundation. All right, so it is a little harder to use this way but it does give you a more natural, lighter finish. It's just, I think, taking a little bit longer. So, you know, you could really go either way. Here's the side with the Kabuki brush and I use a Stands Out sponge to sort of remove some. I, I almost think it's easier to do it that way because then you end up with this finish, which took me a little bit longer using a smaller brush. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down on my neck just because I have noticed this has got enough coverage that it looks like my face is too white. I need a little extra coverage under my eyes. I don't think this works great under the eyes. So we're just going to use my Natasha Denona concealer for that. Okay, so I still think my face looks a little white. I've noticed this over the days of wearing it that sometimes my face looks too white, but we're gonna go with it. I think I removed enough. I am using the new, <laughs> the newer Givenchy Prisme Libre uh, powder in number three. This is not quite as nice of a finish as the old one where they had talc in it, but it's still pretty good. It allows the skin and the foundation to shine through. Okay, so I honestly couldn't tell much difference. Here's it powdered. This is how we're gonna give it a good test and we're gonna see how this goes like this. I'm gonna go ahead and put my makeup on and we will talk about it from there. Okay, this is where we are starting. I have tried this quite a bit and it's just taken me a while to do a review. I know I absolutely love this. What I haven't done with it is given it a full 
day's wear test to see how it breaks down on my skin. I just turned 49. I have textured skin, but not terribly textured because I do a lot of things, a little bit of Accutane to, you know, keep the oiliness away. But I would say my skin is pretty normal right now with a little bit of oiliness that breaks through in the T-zone towards the end of the day. It used to be extreme. Now it's just you know, kind of normal. I think, you know, a lot of people have a little bit of breakthrough, right? So what I haven't done is checked in at the end of the day to see how it broke up and how long it lasted. I just know that when this goes on, it looks like velvet. My one complaint with it is that I think it is just a tad bit light and the other one is definitely too dark. I've tried mixing them, didn't really look right. It ended up being too dark overall. So I gotta say that the best way I think to put this on was the second way that I did it with just a smaller brush where I was able to kind of tamp it in and spread it out really nice and thin for me just because I don't want that full mask of white on my face. Now, if, if this matches you exactly and if you do want that, like that full coverage, this offers a beautiful version of that. I just, I have a lot of freckles and ruddiness, so you really see it um, on my neck. During the winter, I probably won't care. I think it will look so good during the winter. So. I think this is gonna work for a lot of skin types. They do have a pretty good color range, I think. I just, overall, so far, the actual texture of this has been one of my absolute favorites that I have tried. Really, really loving this so far. So if you are interested in dipping your toe into the, you know, sort of stick foundation, this is just a really, really good formula. This just gives you this like velvet powder finish. You really don't need to powder. So far, I'm absolutely loving this, but let's do the full wear test and uh, let's just see how this goes, how long until it sort of breaks down and how it looks at the end of the day. Enough said, let's get this wear test started. Okay, this is pretty much right after I put it on in natural light. Pretty good. Okay, so this is two hour check-in really natural looking. I'm right next to a window. You can really see the texture of my skin. I've really kind of sheared this out so you can see a little of my freckles poking through which is how I want it. So far really really comfortable. Probably really didn't even need to powder and in fact the powder is probably going to show a little more texture than it otherwise would. Um, this is just this is holding up great. Really really happy with this. Okay I'll check in in a little while. So I have made it to eight hours. It has been a long day. I have been busy. I worked out and got sweaty. It's been hot up in my room. And um, this is where we landed. I definitely see that my oils have broken through. I don't know if you can see. Um, it definitely looks a little bit polka dotty pore up, you know, pory up here for sure. So I think if you're oily, it is going to actually break through, you know, eventually. And let me see what happens if I just sort of rub it. You can just sort of rub it back in. It doesn't leave you with like a weird dry sort of situation. It's super easy to fix. So like I would definitely take this one. I think if I was going to be going on, you know, traveling, something like that, this is one I would wear because it is so easy to fix if you're an oily skin person. Your oils are gonna break through. It's just a matter of whether that is just a like complete mess when that happens or if it's like not too bad if you can just powder back down or you know if it's salvageable. This is totally salvageable really without much, I mean I don't even really need a brush. Just sort of rubbing it back in really, really helped. I do see that, like, especially once I rub it in, you know, some of it has disappeared around my nose. I did apply it a little bit on the lighter side just because I didn't want that, like, full-on mask finish. You can get that with this, and it's velvety and beautiful. Um, I actually, I think this is one of the most beautiful foundations I've tried in a while. Just in the finish that you get from it just looks kind of a little bit otherworldly. It really 
um, even in just like normal everyday lighting, it doesn't stick out as like super makeup-y unless you put it on thicker. But even when you do, your skin just looks airbrushed and like it looks like velvet. It really has one of the most like true velvet finishes that I've ever seen. It's it kind of dried down to this sort of like powdery perfect but not dried out finish. And I love this. I think this this is one of those ones where I mean I've been wearing it in a lot of the videos that I've been doing lately. I've been doing a lot of b-roll of me trying on different eyeshadows and I keep looking and I'm like what was I wearing on my skin because that looks really good like why do these all look so good I was wearing this in almost all of them and uh it just wow I these are expensive so I mean if if this isn't in the budget do you have to go out and get it no but I gotta say, if you are looking for this kind of finish and you're really not finding it with other stuff, this is kind of special, I think. I do not get this finish with any of the traditional sort of liquid foundations. It holds up pretty well. When it goes away, it's not that, you know, it doesn't look like, oof, boy, your, your makeup looks rough, you know, and then you just really gotta start over. You can really sort of just sort of rub it in and it's gonna look, you know, kind of more like your natural skin. I don't know what's so different about this, but this finish, I can't say that I've ever gotten this out of another foundation or stick foundation. I do really like the Merit ones, but these I would say, I'm, I'm very happy because they just changed it so they actually have a color that matches my skin tone now. This is probably, this and the Lancome are the the closest. This one is just a little more, mm, I almost said moist, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's got a little more hydration to it. It is, I'm trying to see if you can even see it. Yes, you can. In the finish, I don't know if you can see this in the actual, the way it looks. This is, see how it's a little glossy? And this one is not, it's more powdery looking. It's just, it's a little more matte. That's kind of the difference. And if you are looking for probably the best stick foundation that I have found this year, and of all the ones that I have tried, I think this Dior is, I think it's this year's best. Last year I would say the Merit was the best, and before that I would say the Lancome was the best. They're all really good, but the finish on this Dior is something special. It's so, so pretty, and it really, it doesn't even need to be powdered down, whereas the Merit I think needs to be powdered down, and so does the, the Lancome is a little bit, it's like in between the Merit and the Dior. The Lancome you could probably get away with not if you are dry skin. So like Jen Phelps, she has very dry skin and she does not like any stick kind of foundations, but she loves the Lancome. So I would say the Dior is a tiny bit drier than the Lancome. So for if you don't have the driest of the dry skin, it's really the Dior I think is probably the best choice out of all of them. I think if you have really oily skin, you might not like any of these, but the closest one I would say is the Dior and you would just powder it down more and then I think you'd be good. Okay, I've gone on about that enough. I've actually been wanting to do this review for a while just because I've been so impressed with this particular one. It's pretty expensive, but I did get it for my birthday and I think it was worth every penny and I'm kind of going through it because I've been wearing it a lot lately. I may or may not get to doing the new Huda Beauty one. I don't care for this, but I'm gonna keep trying it. <laughs> this is heavy. I'm gonna keep trying it and see if I can find a way to wear this. This is, this is for oily skin, like real oily skin, <laughs> I think. So if you have dry skin, don't even bother. This is also for covering up a lot of sins. I don't know.
If you guys are interested, let me know. I will do a full review of this one, but I don't enjoy putting this on my face. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Whereas this one, I love. All right. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have tried this and you have different thoughts than me or the same. And if you like this kind of content, I sure would appreciate a like and subscribe as it really helps my channel to grow. All right. I think that's it. Another great foundation. I love when I find a really good foundation and I can share it. All right. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you in the next video.